Fans, welcome to the campus of Western Washington University, the mecca of NCAA Division II men's college basketball. Tonight, your Vikings play host to the Seattle Pacific Falcons. Fans, we'd like to begin tonight by acknowledging that we gather on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascades watershed from time immemorial. Please join us in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and Nooksack Tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. Fans, at this time, we'd like to ask you to rise if you are able and remove your hats. It's time now to honor America as the Western Washington University Band plays our national anthem. Now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First to visitors from Seattle Pacific. At guard, a 6'1 sophomore, number one, Owen Moriarty. At guard, a 6'6 sophomore, number three, Jaden Penagar. At guard, a 5'10 junior, number 10, Maui Z. At forward, a 6'9", sophomore, number 14, Trace Evans. And at forward, a 6'7", senior, number 24, Shaw Anderson. The interim head coach for Seattle Pacific, Kefri Fazio. Coach Fazio is assisted by Donald Rollman, David Choi, and George Parker. Six man. Put your hands together and get ready to meet the starting lineup for your Viking. At guard, a 6'4 junior, number one, KJ Kai Johnson. At guard, a 5'11 red shirt freshman, number three, T. John C. At forward, a 6'9 senior, number 13, Jonathan Ned. At forward, a 6'9 junior, number 20, Nick Velp. And at guard, a 6'4 junior, number 44, Will Wilson. Your Vikings, they're coached by Tony Dominguez. He is assisted by A.J. Albritton, Bob Hofstetter, and Otavio Jude. Six man, it's game time. 
Welcome back to men's basketball here in Bellingham, Washington. Your Vikings are back home to play host to the Seattle Pacific Falcons. Seattle Pacific 6-5 and five in the GNAC. Vikings the opposite of that, 5-6 and six after a four-game road trip. They are back in action. Zen Hill and Butch Community here going to take you through this one. Boy, this is critical. Six teams get into the GNAC tournament. The Falcons in a three-way tie for fourth. The Vikings just a game behind and a game out of the playoff spots in seventh. So, big one tonight. Vikings win the tip off with Nick Velp tipping it back to Kai Johnson. Tijon Sane is out there for the Vikings making his fourth consecutive start. And the Vikings will be on offense first. It's a backdoor cut into Kai Johnson who misses the layup. And Seattle Pacific is running and now in transition. Panagar hesitates and goes on Ned. Has it stripped away and stolen. Jonathan Ned controls it. And now Tijon Sane up the court. Tijon Sane is averaging 14 points in those three starts that he has had consecutive. Here's Will Wilson in the corner who buries it for three. And the Vikings get on the board first by Will Wilson, the Vikings' second highest scorer behind, of course, Kai Johnson. Now he's Z out there. Evans handing around the perimeter. Here is Shaw Anderson, Seattle Pacific's go-to star player. Anderson back up top with Z. Seattle Pacific looking to get on the board here in the first minute. They will go with Anderson, 10 minutes. He's got Tijon Sane on him, looking to work that mismatch. Instead, they kick it around. Here's the corner, pump fake. Step into a shot is Pentagar, and he rolls it through. Oh, nice little pump fake by Pentagar there. Seattle Pacific on the board. Vikings now up with Kai Johnson. Vikings coming off a win against Western Oregon after a tough road schedule, which found them going one and four, or one and three, excuse me, as Jonathan Ned drives to the cup and rolls it in. Able to get that shoulder into the defender, allowed him to get by. Open lane after that for the lay-in. Jonathan Ned had just six points against Western Oregon in the victory for the Vikings, already on the board early here. Pentagar drives in, two defenders there. Trace Evans with a pump fake and blocked by Nick Velp down low. A two-hand block where he did not have to leave his feet. No. Johnson working around the screen from Velp now. Velp on the outside into Jonathan Ned now. Sets the screen for him this time. Ned on the right side, putting it on a dribble, going to pull up off the handle and bury it. Jonathan Ned rolling early here for Western Washington. 13 point a game score. One of five Vikings averaging in double figures right now. Shaw Anderson up top to Evans. Evans looking for a handoff or a teammate in sight. Vikings doing a good job defending. Now Shaw Anderson drives on two straight up defenders, but a put back by Trey Evans. Quick outlet pass up by Kai Johnson to Ned. He's going to step back one more time from the oh. mid-range and get it again. Jonathan Ned is nasty. Three for three, seven points and three possessions for John Ned. And two of those jump shots were some really nice faders. Off the dribble handle. We know Jonathan Ned can do it. He's showing off the scoring ability tonight. Vikings up five. Pass was tipped down to Anderson. Here's his own fadeaway, and he gets oh. it right back. Talk about scoring ability. 1,802 career points coming in. Over 20 points a game, both this season and last. Kai Johnson, he gets hacked, and he'll get the first free throws of tonight's game. Going back to Shaw Anderson, now second in all-time scoring for Seattle Pacific, and a very realistic opportunity for him to potentially pass up Lauren Anderson, whose record has stood since 1958 with 1,948 total points. It'll yeah, be a fun milestone to watch. You're the second leading scorer in your school's history, and you're only the second leading Anderson in your school's history. <laughs> exactly. And there have been a few other ones along the way, too. So He's got at least seven games to do it as Kai Johnson makes the first free throw of two. Kai Johnson entering his own sort of milestone range. He needs now just three more points for 1,000 in his career as a Viking. Vikings lead it 11 to 6. 16.55 left here. Driving is Evans, spinning on Velp. Nick Velp tips it loose. Vikings get it off a turnover. Good defense by Nick Velp early on. Wilson crosses to his left. Looks for the pop with Velp. Velp now on the right side on Evans. Scoops it up with the right hand and can't get it too strong. Z with a quick pass up to the left side. Moriarty down to Evans in the post. 6-9, Trace Evans. Evans kicks outside. Three-pointer, Pentagar is too short. Shaw Anderson with an offensive rebound. They looked for a cutter, and it was stolen by Will Wilson. Could not get it to Z. And Tijon Sane will dribble it up for the Vikings. Vikings settling down now here. Kai Johnson around the right side. Vikings circling the arc. 
Kijan Sane spins around to his left. Sane gets to the paint, has an open lane, oh, and takes the finish. foul and in the one. end one. A tough take by Tijan Sane. And a chance for three. The 5'11 red shirt freshman got hacked at the end of that layup, and he's got a chance to extend this Vikings lead early on. Yeah, got deep into the paint and then changed hands and was able to finish with that high, that high finish there. Tijan Sane looks to convert and does so. Vikings lead now up to eight here, 14 to six. Four minutes gone in our first half. Seattle Pacific looking for an answer on this offensive possession. Moriarty will go to the right, drive into Johnson, and there's a foul on the floor. Foul goes on Kai Johnson, and that'll send us into our first media timeout of tonight's game. Vikings lead at 14 to six at our first break. We'll be right back on Vikings TV. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back to Sam Carver Gymnasium. Vikings with an early 14 to six lead, a very frenetic pace, and a lot of that lead attributed to Jonathan Ned. Hit a three, hit a, a lay-in, and then that nice little fall away from the wing. Seven quick points and three possessions for Jonathan Ned, averaging 13.2 points, 42.2 rebounds a game, having an outstanding senior season. Seattle Pacific will have it out of the timeout on the baseline. Moriarty will inbound for SPU. The Falcons trail 6-14 here. Shaw Anderson just two points early on. Working on Jonathan Ned, and he drives past him to the right side, goes with a reverse oh, and makes it. Nice. First the spin to get by Ned, and then to get to the other side of the rim for the reverse. It just seemed like he was floating through the air. He is a multifaceted scorer. He can do it a lot of different ways. Sane inside for himself, but he gets it off back iron. Z quickly now up for SPU. Left side, Luton now corner three for Shy Anderson and it rattles out. Offensive rebound fought for, but instead gained by the Vikings with Kai Johnson who's gonna go quick. Kai Johnson on the right side. Johnson puts his back to the basket. Kicks back out, Tijon Sane. Sane is ripped through and a foul will get it on the sideline for the Vikings. Maui Z with his first personal. Kind of an interesting matchup of point guards tonight. Tijon Sane at 5'11", Maui Z at 5'10". So very small, quick guys. And you see this Anderson move again. That spin past Ned was phenomenal. How quick that was. Here's Jonathan Ned, another fade away. He's too short this time. Nick Velp tipping it around. Can't. Neither team can get it. Vikings end up getting it, though. Good job by Jonathan Ned to help out Velp on that offensive rebound. Here's Will Wilson now in with the left hand, and he gets it off the right side. And a rebound by Seattle Pacific with Maui Z. Falcons will slow it down, trailing six. To so this point, one of the few times we've seen a slower pace. Here's SPU for three with Lutonen, and he gets it to go. Transfer from UW, spent three or four years there, and has come in here now, getting close to a double-figure score at about 9.8, 9.3, excuse me. Vikings lead now, simmered down to just three points. Vikings need something on offense and answer back to Seattle Pacific. And the pass goes out of bounds. That won't do it. And the Vikings turn it over. Isaac Morrow coming in for the Vikes. Nick Velp will sit down. Theo McMillan is on for Seattle Pacific. Majority ball hander down the court will be the newly checked in McMillan for Seattle Pacific. 14.05 left in our first half. 
McMillan guarded by Tijon Sane. And they try to get a pass out to the wing to Moriarty, but they instead turn it right back over to the Vikings. So the turnover is a race. Western Washington will get it back now. Dijon Sane far outside, Kai Johnson. Alone on the left side. Johnson into the paint, puts it up. Too short, gets his own rebound, and oh. just rolls out. Good hustle on his own miss, but he can't get it two times. And now Shaw Anderson ends up hitting Kai Johnson to the ground. And the foul is an offensive foul. Took a second there, but it will go to the Vikings on an offensive foul to Shaw Anderson. And it did look like Kai Johnson got there just narrowly. But he is squared up. He has a free with legal guarding position. And Anderson leans into him. A good call. Vikings get a wrap around to Will Wilson. Has a head of steam to the cup, and he finishes off the glass. The Vikings are curling hard off the screen. And defenders trailing, and they're just taking that curl and getting to the basket. This is a Viking team that leads the GNAC and ranks sixth in Division II with 91.3 points per game. Shy Anderson for the Falcons puts it high off the glass and rolls it in. Found a way to put that one through. 16 to 13 game here, close one early on. Jonathan Ned step back three pointer and it rolls out. Kai Johnson tried to get a put back, does get an offensive rebound back and he gets it. He misses once again <laughs> and that somehow goes in. That the was the toughest of the three. Exactly. The two easy, or it should have been easy layups didn't go, but instead yeah, the tip. Yeah, and they were contested. Yeah. They weren't simple, but, yeah. but still, that was the hard one. Looked easy compared to the make. Lutonen step in, two-point jumper. And a good answer right there from the graduate student. Tijon Sane directing traffic now high for the Vikings, and a foul is called on Theo McMillan. Darius Scary will come in for the Vikings as Jonas Latour comes in for Seattle Pacific. So Kyle Lutman. I, back to Go ahead. <laughs> he had about three offensive rebounds on that one possession. He's up to four rebounds already. He, <laughs> he wanted a foul, but hey, he got the basket eventually. Isaac Morrow with the ball for Western Washington. Kai Johnson on the right side. Pointing Gary to the other side. Johnson wants the lane. He steps back from the dunker spot, and that one rolls out. Will Wilson offensive rebound and a putback. Somehow gets it in, and he's got a chance for one more. Will Wilson, the Vikings are showing some hustle on the offensive glass tonight. Already five offensive boards for Western, and Will Wilson here. Johnson with that little pull-up missing, but Will Wilson crashing the boards hard. And we know Seattle Pacific has the worst rebounding offense, but they also, along with that, had the best rebounding defense, so it's not like well, they're usually getting out-rebounded. They still have a positive margin, but I guess when you shoot as good as Seattle Pacific, you don't really have to rely. Almost 49% from the field. They don't tend to play at the pace that we've been playing tonight, and uh, they don't miss a lot. Exactly. Shaw Anderson fade away on Kai Johnson, hits back iron. Will Wilson with the defensive board. KJ now up on the right side with a head of steam. Drives into the block, puts it up and rolls it through. Might have got hit in the face also. Vikings lead up to eight. 23-15 with 11.30 left in the first half. Vikings are rolling so far against SPU and Darius Gary almost had himself a steal, but there was a foul. And the foul was on Gary. And that'll bring us to media timeout number two in our first half. Vikings up 23 to 15, 11 28 left when we come back here on Vikings TV.
Welcome back to Carver Gymnasium where the fans have showed out for a nice game tonight. You can see some members of the women's volleyball team had a nice 12 and six conference record this year. When uh, another Viking team, the Western women's basketball team tonight, winning 91-84 at Northwest Nazarene in overtime. Vikings had a 16 point lead at one point. Come back with seven Vikings in double figures tonight. I mean, you got the extra or at least half a period in overtime to do that, but a good offensive showing for the Vikings. We, did, we, we know they could score. They hit 100 this year. Yeah. Don't always see it from seven players, though. And a foul is called on Darius Gary trying to defend Shaw Anderson. I just thought seven players scored. All of them were in double figures, uh, led by Riley Dykstra. 17 points, eight rebounds, five assists. What a night. So now here we're on the sideline, Moriarty to inbound for SPU. They trail by eight, trying to come back here in this hostile environment. Pump fake three, kick out now Anderson, top of the key three pointer oh, is buried said, through. We've seen on a drive, we've seen a post up, we've seen a three. And the man can score a lot of different ways. Yes, he can. All GNAC first team last season as well as all West region. Louis Grant Holiday's out there for Western as well. Here's Will Wilson, who's too strong. T. John Sane finds his way into an offensive rebound and another putback. Being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice an air pass, ball. He, he didn't have to even leave his feet for that <laughs> rebound. Will Wilson doesn't get an assist for that, though. He shouldn't. <laughs> Moriarty moving to his left, crosses over to the right, spins around Kai Johnson, has to kick outside. Pentagar in the corner. Here is Z now driving. Kicks far corner. Jonas Latour for three is offline. And the Vikings get a rebound. Cross court to Sane. Bounce pass into the lane. Will Wilson with the left hand. Vikings lead up to nine. This is a game being played at Western's pace. I don't think the Falcons want to play quite this quick. And good on the Vikings having the game plan as that's denied. And it'll stay to Seattle Pacific. Isaac Morrow. Tip the entry pass into Shaw Anderson. Beautiful find on that play by Tijon Sane. Second assist of the night for him. Yeah, Will Wilson already up to 10 points. He gets subbed off for the Vikings as Jonathan Ned is back out there. Shaw Anderson with his back to the basket. Louis Grant Holiday guarding him. 10 seconds. That one's tipped loose. Tijon Sane with a steal. Now Fastly is Sane behind the back. Spinning now. Tijon oh, Sane. What a move. What a finish. That's going to force a timeout from the Seattle Pacific side. And with the coach's 32nd, we'll keep it here. But how about the Vikings? And how about something that we're going to mention as well now with this break? Kai Johnson, 1,000 career points as a Viking. And, I mean, this season has really been the cap off for that. And he's, he's not finished. Kai Johnson's got plenty of time left in his career to add to that. But Kai Johnson, the first Viking to hit 1,000 points since D'Angelo Minnis last season. No, it's an incredible accomplishment. And anybody that, that, that reaches that mark has had an outstanding career. And, boy, and he has just exploded over the last couple of seasons, particularly this year, averaging over 22 points a game. And, being one of the most dynamic players in the GNAC. He has been the Vikings leader this season, and he doesn't just score. He does a whole lot more than that. He's fourth in the conference in assists per game. He's also averaging four and a half rebounds per game, and he shoots the ball extremely well for this Vikings team. Perfect leader at the helm for this Vikings squad this season. And a congratulations to him as well for 1,000 career points. Back underway here with Seattle Pacific on offense. 9.35 left. Here's a pop three. Schuster... And he yep. buries that one. How about that three? Little pick and shooter pop threat. from the Austrian. There is some geographic representation on this Seattle team. We've got a couple Australians, and as you mentioned, the Austrian as Seattle Pacific is moving off the Western Washington miss. Around the perimeter, Moriarty behind the back on Sane. Moriarty, Sane hits the deck, oh. but a left-handed finish. Good take. Uh, Moriarty is from Seattle. Not quite as exotic. <laughs> Not, but the move yeah. was very exotic. It was an exotic move. They got Tijon Sane on the ground. Vikings lead at 6, 29-23. Here's Jonathan Ned. Ned near the elbow, turning around and fading away. He's too short, though, and that one's tipped out of bounds by Seattle Pacific. And the Vikings will get it as they cannot corral it in. So 
I thought that one of John Ned's quick successions of buckets was a three. It was not. So he there was six a close point. There was a close one atop the key, but gotta look at the officials' arms, don't I? <laughs> exactly. Viking handoff, Kai Johnson now. Johnson spins and fades off a nice move and it rolls in. He's up to eight now. With five rebounds as well. Vikings shooting exactly 50% from the field. Seattle Pacific shooting 62 and a half. Schooner Stett trying to find a teammate. Gets a bounce pass to Shaw Anderson. Back up top. Now moving around a screen. Lost his dribble into the corner, Anderson. Anderson with Morrow in front of him. Anderson goes to the top onto the left side, right side, excuse me, Lutzen and buries a three pointer. Lutzen had a game in high school where he had scored 51 points, 13 of 13 from three point range. He definitely has the range. He, he looks like a shooter, if that makes sense. Jonathan Ned with a driving kick out to Louis Grant Holiday. He'll try a three pointer of his own, cannot get the bank though. McMillan will go slow for SPU. They trail by just five. It's fair to say, you look at Luton and Sreen, he does not look like a banger, no. It's <laughs> exactly. He's going to stretch the floor. Kick out to get it to Luton, and he there tries another three-pointer. That one hits back iron. Ty Johnson, and a blocking foul is called on the Falcons. It was close. It was close. He tried to just get a cheeky one, McMillan did, but instead it'll send us with a personal foul and send us to a media timeout. So the Vikings up 31 to 26, 7.32 left in this first half. When we come back, you're watching Vikings TV. Legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. Welcome back to Week Recorded, Sam Carver Gymnasium. The Vikings with a 31-26 lead on the strength of getting extra possession. Seattle Pacific is shooting 61% from the field, 11 of 18. But the Vikings have nine more shots for two reasons. One, offensive rebounds, seven to just two for the Falcons. But maybe the bigger one is turnovers. Seattle Pacific has turned the ball over six times. The Vikings have turned it over just once so far allowing them to open up that five-point lead. Back with the play-by-play -play is Zen Hill. And just to add on to you, Butch, Seattle Pacific does have the third lowest turnover margin with a negative 3.38 in every game, or in the average of the game. So it makes sense. Vikings are showing exactly why that stat stays true as Kai Johnson is at the free throw line. Vikings now in the bonus, and he cannot get it on the first of the one and one Theo McMillan has been handling it at the point guard ever since coming in off the bench. He's got Kai Johnson in front of him. He gets a screen from his teammate. Moriarty on the right side behind the back. Lost it as he slipped to the ground. Nick Velp gives it to Kai Johnson. Bounce pass to the left side to Will Wilson. Wilson trying to drive baseline. Spins. Here's Nick Velp with a mid-range. Not a jump shot. And that's an offensive rebound by Morrow. But the putback just rolls out. Another offensive board. This time the Vikings cannot convert on it. Anderson with Morrow on the left side. Back to the basket. Anderson going to work. He'll try a fade away and it rolls out. Took two bounces to get it off. Nick Velp high post. Kai Johnson spin move in the low post gets held. And they'll call a foul on the ground. It will be free throws, though, for Kai Johnson. It will be free the throws. bonus. So. But instead of a guaranteed two, now a one and one. He's got to make the first to get his second. He missed it just earlier. 
6.30 left in the first half. Vikings still with that 31 to 26 lead. They once led by 11 points. Ty Johnson cannot get it from the free throw line once again. It is now two of four after making his first two. Maui Z feeds into the high post. Schooner Stett looking for a teammate. Atop the key gets a handoff to Moriarty. Moriarty to the left side. Behind the back on Velp and gets an easy layup. Nice move to get to that space by Moriarty. This is as close as SBU has been able to get it over and over again and within three points. Have not had a lead tonight. Will Wilson on the left side. Strong once again. Nick Velp with an offensive rebound again though as Will Wilson is fouled on an entry pass. So now Will Wilson will go to the line in the bonus with nine personal fouls. Still one and one for the Vikings. Will Wilson is the leading scorer tonight for the Vikings with 10 points in the first half. And a very good free throw shooter, 81.4%. The Vikings as a team come in at 77.5%, which is excellent. And Seattle Pacific just a couple ticks above them at 77.7. Yeah. So. These are the two best free throw shooting teams in the conference. Just two excellent shooting teams all in around In general, there. exactly. Will Wilson coming off 10 points against Western Oregon. Makes two free throws there for the Vikings. They get the lead back up to five. Now we see with Tijon Sane back on for the Vikings in front of him. Schooner Stett does not set a screen. It's called off by Z. 15 as they get into their set now. Z inside, passes tip to the out. Moriarty will still take the three oh, and find the bottom of the net. That's nice. You catch that pass off the deflection, have to reset and still knock it down. That's fine work for Moriarty. No rhythm thrown off on that one. Sane going left to right, pick and pop to Nick Velp, who's just a bit short. Offensive rebound by Morrow and a putback and a tough one also for Isaac Morrow. Maybe one of the things, you know, we talk about that rim being soft, but it also means that the rebounds don't come off as far. Vikings can crash hard. If they, if they have an angle to crash hard, the ball's not going to go over your head on that rim. They have been doing a phenomenal job on the offensive rebound side. They now have 10 offensive rebounds as the foul goes on Isaac Morrow. Give you some context here. The Vikings have missed 16 shots. The rebounds at that end are 10-6 Western. Seattle Pacific has missed 12 shots. The advantage is 10-2 Western. We have an appearance from Kobe Elsner from Linden, whose father played here in the late 80s. SPU on offense for the look to try and find him potentially. Maui Z driving on Sane. They get it into the corner, a three point from Lutonen. And that's rebounded by Nick Velp off the miss. 35 31 lead for the Vikings now with four and a half left in the first half. Sane without a dribble, finds Isaac Morrow, top of the key. Will Wilson hands off to Ned. Ned on the left side, lost his dribble, goes cross court. Vikings with 11 on the shot clock. There's a three from oh. Tijon Sane with a hand in his face, didn't matter. Sane's now got double figures in the start tonight. 10 points for him off that three. Left side, Lutonen fakes one. Now we'll take a three to answer, but he can't. Off the front of the rim, Vikings get the rebound. Wilson, between the legs, tried to get into the far corner and it's stolen away by Maui Z. Z, driving quickly, far corner, one extra pass. Shooter Stett gets it. And SBU with a nice move around three with the ball movement. And a timeout on the floor, 3.36 left. We'll go to our break, Vikings up four. You're watching Vikings TV. The Teaching Learning Academy is an organization that's housed in the library and it's where people come to have conversations. They deal with serious issues that have emotional impact in ways that are typically not found in a class. 
We've talked about diversity and inclusivity on our campus and in our community. It not only enriches my education, but also impacts the ways that I can continue my leadership roles. Welcome back to Sam Carver Gymnasium, Wiku Court. We've got a good crowd tonight, especially over on that student side where it is just about full in the lower level. There's a couple pockets of people not here. And then a good smattering in the upper deck. And so one of our better crowds of the season tonight. And seeing a good one, 38-34 Western with 336 left and a half. Uh, we mentioned Kobe Elsner coming in uh, from Linden. His dad, as we said, played basketball at Western. Mom played volleyball at Central. So so, that. And he, he didn't pick either of those two schools. No. Well, that's, that's probably the safest way to go. <laughs> yeah. So Couple. back back underway with the Vikings here. Four-point lead, three and a half left in the first half. And Kai Johnson is going to get called for one there. I think he stepped, think out, he of stepped bounds. out of bounds, yeah. actually. So not an offensive foul. The defender ended up falling a little bit, so I thought initially could have been offensive, but he did yeah, just he, step he out of bounds. Broke Kobe's ankles there. Yeah, exactly. That's that line that keeps creeping out at random times this season, exactly. right? Exactly. Haven't seen it in a while. The women did a good job avoiding it. Here's Elsner passing to Shaw Anderson, and no shot on a travel call. Get him with the three-second call, I think, actually. So. so the Vikings will get it, though, off a turnover. Tijon Sane, Will Wilson, Isaac Morrow, Kai Johnson, and Jonathan Nett out there for the Vikes. Here's Wilson, tried to get a wraparound pass, but a foul before off the ball is called. Foul goes on, Kyle Lutonen. So that will now be the double bonus for the Vikings. So two guaranteed free throws coming here for Isaac Morrow. Isaac Mora was initially the player slotted into the starting lineup for the Vikings when B.J. Colley went down, but on that road trip, T. John Sane became the starter, and we see tonight T. John Sane the starter, but Isaac Mora still a very large role this season in comparison to even last, and he has done a good job off this bench as he puts the lead up to six now for the Vikings. Falcons around the perimeter, Maui Z. Shaw Anderson outside. On the left is Elsner. Schooner step back to Elsner. Schooner step top of the key. Z tries a long range three and it rolls out. Good job by the Vikings to force that shot. And we have over and back called on Tijon Sane as Jonathan Ned was trying to get him to pass before. And that'll turn it over for the Vikings. So Seattle Pacific will get it on the sideline. Two and a half minutes left in this first half. Vikings looking good so far through. That pass inside and there's a foul before the entry. It was Kai Johnson guarding on Nikia Schoenerstedt. SPU will get it. Five team fouls on the Vikings so far. That was Kai Johnson's second, and he'll come out for Nick Velp. Yeah, no reason to risk this uh, at this point. It's only two minutes. You're up six. Entry pass goes into Shy Anderson. SPU moving around the perimeter. Elsner hands off to Z. Z gets a screen, gets to the pop. Schooner step for three, cannot get it off a rattle. Elsner offensive rebound. He is fouled, and we are living on this side of the court for Seattle Pacific. Foul goes on Tijon Sane. Yeah, very lengthy trip down the floor here. Sane and picks up his first personal. Yeah, and that is only the sixth team foul, so this uh, long possession will continue. As he inbounds inside to Shy Anderson. Double move off oh. the glass. Strong finish after strong finish for Shaw Anderson tonight. Sane working around the baseline. Will dribble back up. Work back into that corner. Top of the key to Will Wilson. Entry pass into Nick Velp. Velp with three defenders there. Puts up a sky hook oh. and gets it. 
Velp goes off the glass for that one to give the Vikings the lead back to six. His first points of the night. Phelps got four rebounds as well as two steals and a block on defense. He's been killing it. Now a minute 30 left in the first half. Anderson. Z working wraparound pass. A great pass inside. Schoenerstedt gets it on the left side. Vikings go quickly with Jonathan Ned up to the right side. Ned gets past his defender. Reverse layup is just too far off. As he asks for a screen. Waves off Anderson. Schoenerstedt is there. Tijon Sane, the defender in front. They switch on now with Ned. Elsner back to Ned. Uh, Z, excuse me. Anderson head fake. Pulls up from the free throw line. He's too short. Gets his own rebound. Off with the left hand and gets it. Lead is down to two now. Seattle Pacific trying to close out this first half strongly and maybe even grab their first lead of the game. 34 seconds. 42 to 40 game. Ned dribble pull up. Long two is good. Jonathan Ned doing what he did early on. Stepped into that one, which is the first of the night like that. Shot clock turned off for Seattle Pacific. Likely trying to hold for a last shot. Move this towards a one possession game to end the half. Shaw Anderson, entry pass inside, and Schoenerstedt is fouled as well. And an and one with 2.3 left on the game clock. Mickey Schoenerstedt with a nice finish. Two Vikings defenders were aggressively there trying to get a block, and it costed them. This nice little slip there as Anderson drew defenders to him, and Schoenerstedt gets that lay in. Will Wilson picked up the foul. The end one is no good, rebounded, tipped away, and that's how the time will expire. Vikings hold on to a two-point lead, 44 to 42, in this rivalry night between Seattle Pacific and Western Washington. We're gonna head now down to the floor with A.J. Albritton and Jeffrey Evans joining us here on Vikings TV for a halftime interview. We'll be back after the break, though. Stick around on Vikings TV for more. We're here with assistant coach A.J. Albritton. A.J., Westerns, SPU, always a great rivalry. Right in there, 44-42 Western. What's been the key to the first half for you guys? Uh, rebounding. Uh, early, well, we've kind of lost touch of that, and that's why they were able to come back in. We're just getting lost defensively. So we got to clean up uh, whatever's going on there. We'll communicate and see what's going on there, but we can't let shooters shoot. Uh, but, yeah, we got our lead because our guards are rebounding. If we continue to rebound and keep there from second chance points and deny the three, we can, we can win this game. Pretty much just summed it all right there. I'm going to let you get your boys in the locker room. Right, thanks.
Welcome back to Bellingham, Washington men's basketball. It's been a good first half. Vikings lead it by two at the break. And boy, I'm going to send it over to Butch Community. He's going to break down that first half for us. Oh, we see the halftime stats. Seattle Pacific shot 58% from the field. You'd think, okay, you're going to have a lead, right? But no, Vikings shot well as well at 47% and then had two big advantages. The rebounds there, you see 20 to 15, and then the turnovers, 8 to 4. And that, that really was the key. The Vikings ended up getting five more shot attempts and also got nine more free throw attempts and, and taking that 44 to 42 halftime lead. Let's look at some of the individual scoring. First of all, for Western Washington, 12 points for Will Wilson, 10 points for Tijon Sane. There was eight for John Ned and Kai Johnson, and then four for Isaac Morrow and two for Nick Velp. Go to the other end of the floor, Shaw Anderson, 13 points, 10 off the bench for Nicholas Schonersfeld, eight for Kyle Lutonen, seven for Owen Moriarty, and then uh, two points each for Jaden Pentagar and Trace Evans for the total of 42. An entertaining first half, Zen really thought both teams got out, played quickly, got good looks, and then at halftime we get one even better. That's this guy highlight. knocks down this putt. <laughs> of a, Look at that. Yes. That was the highlight of the half. We had a ton in the first half, but that was the highlight of the half. Crowd, yeah. crowd erupted to him making it as well. <laughs> he, he got himself a gift card, so that was fun. Was to watch. there any break on that putt? Nah, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't see him analyze the green too much. Also, so he was kind of just good out to there. know that the floor is still yeah. level. Yep. <laughs> We're not seeing a bunch of break on those putts. So, all right. So Western Washington will try and hold on to this. First half lead, Vikings are a 13 and nine overall record. Seattle Pacific is a 13 11. These are two teams that are very neck and neck in the standing so far this season. Both teams, of course, wanting to make one of the final six spots to end up in Ellensburg at Central Washington and play in the GNAC championships. This game could have some high implications to that as we are in to our second half of the GNAC schedule. Seattle Pacific will get it at the half. And we are back underway. Maui Z handled it a majority for the Falcons in that first half. He's back out there as well. Trace Evans back onto the floor for the Falcons. Oh, and Moriarty as well. Here's Evans down low. Nick Velp is there. Nick Velp gets another block tonight. And it goes off of his hands out of bounds. Shaw Anderson out there for Seattle Pacific as well as Jaden Pentagar. It is the starters for the second half for Seattle Pacific. Vikings, same starters that started the game with Kai Johnson, T. John Sane, Jonathan Ned, Nick Velp, and Will Wilson out there. Here's SPU. Shaw Anderson in the left corner, looking for a teammate, gets it down low. Here is Evans, and he is blocked once again by Nick Velp. Offensive rebound, though, and here's Anderson from the corner bottoms. A hot three out of the half, and just like that, SPU has their first lead of the game. Vikings looking for an answer now. See how they'll respond. It's with Will Wilson, and that one rattles out. SPU now a chance to add then off the Western Washington uh, miss. A good set, a good look, and it just rattled out for Will Wilson. Here's SPU with Evans. Evans looking for a teammate. Did not end up getting it. Pentagar looked back to Anderson. Anderson wasn't there. Moriarty, though, cleaned it up for SPU. Moriarty, a spin is too strong. Nick Velp ends up on the floor. Evans with an offensive rebound gets a putback. Yeah, Evans just yanked the ball away from Nick just a little bit off balance, and Evans gets an easy lay in out of it. SBU now a three-point lead then. Jonathan Ed handoff to Will Wilson on the opposite side. Kai Johnson sprinting around the arc. Outside net, he tries another three, and that one is short. Vikings 0 for 2 from 3 in this half so far. And just two of nine for the game. Yeah, I was going to say they haven't shot it well tonight. Anderson jabs. Ned in front of him. Back to the basket with 15 on the shot clock. Lost control of it. Will Wilson down on the floor. Anderson into the corner. Penegar thought about a three. Gets poked loose by Ned out of bounds. The Falcons will keep possession. Seattle Pacific has eight on the shot clock. Off this inbounds pass. Z inbounds. Trey Sevens is there. He'll go immediately to the hoop, yeah. and a travel is called on him first. He was in a hurry and turned and then lifted the pivot foot. So 
So it will be a turnover. Vikings still winning the turnover battle against Seattle Pacific. They did a good job in that first so half. So they just exchanged an Australian for, a, <laughs> for an Austrian. An Austrian coming in for an Australian, I guess we should say. But either way, different. Schoenerstedt, he has been a stretch piece for the Seattle Pacific offense, especially in this game. We've seen him play very high out on the perimeter. Here's Will Wilson going to work, trying to muscle through to the basket. He fades wow. away and gets that one. That is a tough shot. <laughs> oh, my. That car was all over him. Exactly. Not much to do as a defender there when Will Wilson's just going to muscle his way into a fadeaway contested jumper. Here's Pentagar to answer. He's too strong off the glass. Vikings trail by one, 46-47. Early pull up Jay from Kai Johnson. Just couldn't get the roll. Tijon Saint offensive rebound is fouled on his way up. That's Tijon Saint's second offensive rebound. And he'll get free throws off of this one, off the Kai Johnson miss. Foul goes on Maui Z. And let's just take a look at this one more time for the Vikings leading scorer tonight. A little lean in to create a bit of space and the step back. Tijon Saint, as I said, Second offensive rebound of the night. Don't look. How many do you have coming in? I'm going to say two. He Seven. matched it. Oh, okay. See, I, I, still not I, many. I shouldn't have doubted him. Given the number of minutes he's played, you'd think a ball would kick out occasionally. Yeah. So. yeah, that's true. Makes the free throws, and the Vikings now take a one-point lead back in their favor. Two is a lot when you average one every three games, right? <laughs> exactly. Bounce pass inside. Ripped away. Jonathan Ned could not get it, though, cleanly. And inside Moriarty, back outside, three-pointer is good. Lieutenant once again. His third three-pointer of the night. SPU reclaims a lead of two. Velp looking to tie, gets it ripped on a foul. Good aggressive move. He saw a little gap and just went through it hard. I think he really wanted to go up and try to dunk that if he could have gotten through. And the foul goes on Moriarty, which will be his third personal. Vikings have shot it well from the line so far. These will be the first free throws of the game by Nick Velp. He's got four rebounds on defense. He has two steals and three blocks. He was the player of the game against Western Oregon at a double-double, 17 points and 12 rebounds. Goes one of two from the line. He's got three points. Vikings can't tie it up. Outside, Schoenerstedt. Back to Z, the point guard. Z moving to his left, resets now on the offense with Nick Velp guarding him. Moriarty looking for a teammate at the elbow with his back. Moving around Tijon Sane, and he took one too many steps, and that'll turn things over. Coming in for Seattle Pacific, Kobe Elsner back onto the floor. He is not the only Falcon with Whatcom County connections. At Logan Kinlock is from Yakima, West Valley, but his father was played at Seaholm and then played at Gonzaga, one of the best high school players this, this county's ever produced. He was an outstanding player. Logan Kinlock is a redshirt freshman for Seattle Pacific this year as Jonathan Ed is fouled on the drive. So more free throws coming for the Vikings. They've been getting to the line as that foul goes on Shaw Anderson. Yeah, he was a 6'6 shooter, played on that first Gonzaga team that got to the tournament uh, under Dan Fitzgerald and kind of started their, their growth. And then shortly after that, Don Munson came in and he got to the tournament. He went to Minnesota. Mark Few came over and we pretty well know what happened since yeah, then. Yeah, everyone in Washington knows about where Gonzaga has been the last couple of years in their basketball program. And, and John Kinlock remembered the rims here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he remembered how soft they were, how generous. I had someone ask me, do you think that's, that's against some rule? And I was like, ah, that's a great question to know. I don't think so. It wouldn't be here if it was. <laughs> uh, he actually had a comment on that. It was kind of interesting. Shaw Anderson for SBU. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Falcons on offense. Shaw Anderson with a pull-up. And another good basket by Shaw Anderson. Finish the story. He said that there are some D1 places that actually have a machine where they test the tightness of the rims and the height of the rims. Really? Well, let's not bring that machine here. Here's Nick Velp for three. No, we don't want to change it either. <laughs> Falcons will go slow off the defensive board. 
Shaw Anderson, he's got 18 points for Seattle Pacific leading the way. He's got the ball as well now. Lutonen outside. They go back to Anderson. Kai Johnson try to steal. And Anderson up through Will Wilson with the and one opportunity. Shaw Anderson just dominating on offense. 20 points now and a chance to add to it on 9 of 14 shooting as well. But before we get his free throws, we'll go to immediate timeout. Your Vikings trailing 54 to 51 with 15.08 left in our second half. We'll be right back. You're watching Vikings TV. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back. Let's look around the GNAC a little bit. Men's scores. All of these are partial scores. A lot of late starts tonight. No early ones. Northwest Nazarene at home leading Alaska Anchorage 47-44 with about 15 minutes left. Montana State Billings up at Simon Fraser with a 47-41 lead with about 15 minutes to go. And over in Ellensburg, Central Washington a 32-26 lead with about five minutes left in the first half against Alaska Fairbanks. Back to play-by-play. -play. Zen Hill. How about Simon Frazier upsetting St. Martin's? I saw that on the, the, yeah. the GNAC newsletter. I caught me by surprise. Simon Frazier's been kind of surging. This Seattle Pacific team will have to take on SFU on Saturday. And free throws no good off the end one out of the break. Vikings will have it now trailing by three. 15 minutes flat left in the second half. Vikings trying to take back their game. Well, it just shows in this conference and even really across this region, just about anybody can beat you on a given night. The, the parody in the West region is crazy. Kai Johnson with a spin move, too short. Put back is good. KJ See, did not give he's up He's just on that reprising one. the move from the other night. He throws it off the rim. He gets it. He puts it in. <laughs> a little more spectacular yeah. off the board the other night, but it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Threw it off the front of the rim that time instead of off the glass. And if you can plan that. Yeah, I don't think that one's making a sports center top no. ten. No. Not just top ten. It was number three. Second time in three years we've done that. Exactly, the buzzer beater by Minnis. Anderson driving into the paint, passes off oh. to Elsner who finishes. What a find. Kobe Elsner has played like 65, 66 minutes this year. Now that's his sixth shot of the season. Will Wilson almost has it ripped, but muscles it through to the basket. Vikings cut the lead back to one on a good answer. Will Wilson continues for the Vikings now up to 16. Anderson with Morrow in his face. Offensive foul as Anderson was trying to get the defender off of him. Anderson will pick up personal foul. That's number three on him. Will Wilson will sit down for the Vikings. Louis Grant Holiday, the freshman, is back on. And the third foul, so that's, that is, at this point, that could be a factor. Vikings looking to retake the lead. Moreau to Sane. Sane hesitates, pulls up from the pin. He's too strong. That one tipped out by Morrow. Morrow looking for a save on the hustle. He keeps it in. What a play. And the Vikings will reset on offense. Shot clock ticking down. They're down to 10 seconds now. Sane hesitates, drives to the right, has a hand on the ball, and a foul. On the floor is called. Yeah, Luton had had his arm out, and Tijon Sane ran kind of through it, got bumped a little bit. And they actually credited that foul to Maui Z. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Which, I mean, from my replay at least, didn't necessarily look. It was maybe like a little it, bit of a bump on the drive, but yeah, exactly. 
So we have Coach's timeout. Going to be extended to a full timeout here at the gym. Vikings trail by one after a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Vikings TV. Legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. Welcome back to Western Washington. Your Vikings trail by just one, 55 to 56, with 13 13 left in our game here. It's been a close one between these two rivalry teams. It's been a fun one with a nice crowd as well. The Vikings will look to reclaim a lead that they held on for for the entirety of that first half, but the second half, Seattle Pacific came out hot. They were shooting 60% from the field and 100% two for two from three point range in this second half. Vikings continuing to struggle from the three-point line. They're now down to an 18% clip from three. They are on offense. Kai Johnson jumps into the defender, and he still finishes Ooh. it. Might have been trying to bait one, but instead, might as well just make the bucket instead. He leaned into the defender. The defender kind of backed out a little bit, and Kai just kind of leaned between the two guys and knocked it down. Vikings reclaim a one-point lead. Big possession here. Pass inside, foul off the ball as Kobe Elsner ended up on the floor. Isaac Morrow gets called with a foul. And Seattle Pacific will have some subs. Jonas Latour coming in, as well as Theo McMillan. Jonas Latour, a former state champion with North Kitsap High School. He has been quiet today, just 0 for 1 from the field, but has not seen much time. He is just a redshirt freshman. He has seen decent amount of playing time. Here's a corner three, though, by Luton, and he can't get it. But an offensive rebound saves the possession for Seattle Pacific. Schooner Strat inside on Morrow, goes up and can't get it off the left side. Multiple people tied up, and a foul is called. That one goes on Kai Johnson. They're going to say he backed into, is it Luton? And, and that is personal foul number three for Kai Johnson. Soccer, you back into a guy. Isn't that your foul? I guess that's right, then. That would be consistent. Yeah. I guess so. Inbound coming. Almost stolen away. Anderson does keep it, though. Passes out of a shot. SPU gives it back to Anderson. Sort of a disjointed possession at this point, but now they've reset with about 11 on the clock. They'll put it in the hands of their star player, Anderson. He'll fade away on Morrow. Too strong. Darius Gary has it tipped out of his hands because of a foul. Vikings will get it off the foul. Interesting. Both teams have been pretty straightforward, man-to-man -man in the half court. Not a lot of pressure, no zones. Maybe some little differences in how they've switched on screens, but a pretty straight-up man, half-court man-to-man tonight. Here come the Vikings. Up one, handoff on the perimeter today, or is Gary. Gary lost it on a crossover. That one's lost on the ground. Kai Johnson keeps it up for the Vikings. Tijon Sane now with 12 on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Louis Grant Holiday. Grant Holiday looking for a teammate. Goes far side. Corner three from Gary. Oh. That's his spot. Boy, a great, yeah. The corner three is his thing. And give Louis Grant Holiday credit there. Really patient to find Gary in the corner at the, at the last moment as he was about to come down on the floor. Second assist for Grant Holiday off the bench. Luton in, almost got a lucky roll, but instead the miss is grabbed by. It's not Isaac a Moore. lucky roll. That's a Carver That's roll. That's a Carver roll. We got to trademark that. Yep. Here are the Vikings now, up three. Johnson with the bigger defender on him. Here's Morrow. And a foul called before the shot. Vikings will have it on the baseline. Well, and, uh, and again, Western very close to the penalty now as that's the six-team foul. And that's a media timeout as well. So the Vikings 59-56 lead in a close contest 
11-13 left when we come back. Welcome back. Uh, we got you updated on the men's scores around the GNAC. Let's get you updated on the women's scores. An interesting one down in Monmouth. Montana State Billings, 57. Western Oregon, 49 with about four and a half to go there. So that's still tight. Seattle Pacific, a one-point lead late in the third on St. Martin's. Central Washington defeated Simon Fraser, 70 to 65. Asher Kai, 29 and 12. And as we said earlier tonight, our, the Western Vikings, a 91-84 victory over Northwest Nazarene. We mentioned Riley Dykstra. How about Stephanie Peterson? Ten points, eight, eight, six assists, and seven steals. And also now 1,000 career points for Stephanie Peterson. Right. Isaac Morrow gets the first free throw. Isaac Morrow now up to five points, three rebounds for the Vikings as he misses the second of two. Seattle Pacific has Owen Moriarty back out there. Jonas Latour out there. Here's Theo McMillan with the ball. Shy Anderson, leading scorer tonight for SPU. On most that, nights. On most nights, exactly. And right there he adds to it on a take. He's up to 22 points now. Kai Johnson drifting around the arc. Now Shy Anderson switched onto him. He spins, has it tipped loose. Johnson gets back his own ball. Kai Johnson trying to put a move on. Instead, here's Gary for three, and it rolls out. Not the customary spot. And he's not in the corner. Quickly for McMillan, kick out. Here's Latour, he buries it. Big time three. Uh, sort of a flat-footed release. You probably could have barely slid paper under him, but he knocked it down. McMillan with an assist. That's also his fourth. He's done a good job in that playmaking role off the bench for the Falcons. Tijon saying a long answer. He can't get it, though. Penagar handled it off the rebound for SPU, and now SPU with a 61-60 lead will take things slow in this possession. Anderson in the high post. Morrow there, and Isaac Morrow fouled him. Isaac Morrow will pick up personal foul number three, trying to stop Shaw Anderson, who has been on a roll tonight as most nights. He had 17 points in the last contest against Northwest Nazarene. He's one up that now with 22. But he had also 33 points against Central Washington, including the game-winning putback layup. And a very fun game against Central Washington. 77 to 75 victory it was for Seattle Pacific. They're coming off some close games, and this one looks like it could be another one, and a fadeaway is just buried by Shy Anderson. Anytime he gets a smaller defender, he backs him down. And he took Isaac Morrow there and hit that fall away over him. Mikey's looking to answer, now trail by three. Gary works it into the corner to Grant Holiday. Grant Holiday spinning, he is fouled. And the Vikings. Tour picks up the foul. Vikings will get more free throws. They've shot a whole lot of free throws tonight. In comparison, Seattle Pacific has only shot two free throws. They missed both of them. And conversely, the Vikings, this will be number 19 and 20 for them. And two free throws they missed for both on and ones. And you could argue it's what's helping them stay into this game despite not knocking down a three ball. They found their offensive production in another way, which is the free throw line. The rebounds have, have, have shifted a little bit. Seattle exactly. Pacific now a 27-25 lead. The turnovers have not. It's a, it, Seattle Pacific isn't turning the ball as much as they were in the first half, but it's still 11 to four. Grand Holiday knocks that one down. 
And a good trip to the line for Louis Grant Holiday, making both. Keeps this thing at just a one point game. Isaac Morrow is subbed off. Nick Velp is back on for the Vikings. SPU on offense. They average 74 points per game as they turn this one over. Johnson trying to get it up quickly. Gary saves it into the corner, knocks it off a defender. Ooh. And the Vikings will keep it a heads up play by Darius Gary. Yeah, the lead pass was a little out in front of him. A lot of hustle to get to that and a very athletic play to not fall out of bounds and still be able to recover and throw the ball off the defender. Gary will be subbed off for Jonathan Ned. And the inbound goes to the newly checked in Jonathan Ned. Tijon Sain, though, will handle it and set up the play for the offense. It's Ned moving to the right. Holiday back over to Sane. Sane calling for a screen. Doesn't use it, instead gets a pop out to Velp. Eight on the shot clock for the Vikings. Ned crosses, pulls up with a hand in his face. He's too short. Rebound, Pentagar. 8.35 left in this game for Western Washington to try and pull away. SPU looking to hold on to a one point lead and add to it. Handoff outside, Latour for three. Off the left side of the rim as T. John Sane is hit to the ground. And Owen Moriarty also ended up on the floor, but the foul is on Seattle Pacific. Owen Moriarty went to the floor and Kinda. did the full uh, swan dive thing, the arms fully extended, yeah. sliding on the floor. You get a look at it here, and there it is. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I don't know, what do you call it, the penguin? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, Dijon Sane with the Vikings in the bonus early on here. He will shoot a one and one. There is nine team fouls on Seattle Pacific this half. Dijon Sane just a tick below 90% from the foul line coming in 89.4. He's now four for four tonight, so you gotta figure he's probably over 90% now. Double checking them. No, nope. needs one more. Either way, he did a good job on that trip. He is uh, now 89 of 99. There you go. Those are easy ones to figure out. When, so. Once he gets back into the game, we'll, we'll give him his, his flowers. Oh, we've probably thrown the whammy on him uh, now. He ain't no hope. It disengages because he got subbed out. I like that, thank you. <laughs> Pentagon on the right side for SPU. Kobe Elsner up there. Schooner stead on the left side. Approaching eight minutes in this second half. Neither team can find an edge as of late. Here's a fadeaway oh. from Maui Z. 5'10 guy in the paint turn, hitting the turnaround. And also nice. not, not known to be prolific in scoring, but can do it, of course, at this level, and he shows it there. Ned in the corner, and they call him with a travel off his jab step. That'll turn things over to Seattle Pacific and send us into immediate timeout. Vikings trail by one. Can either team find the edge? We'll find out when we come back here watching Vikings TV here at Western Washington University. Legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. Welcome back to the Wiku Court in Sam Carver Gymnasium, home of the Vikings. Western Washington trailing 64 to 65 out of this media timeout. 740 left for either of these teams to figure out who's going to take this one home. That's Vikings, been, what do you got? It's been a good one, hasn't it? Has it has been, been a been, really fun one. It's been it tight, a lot of scoring. The, the pace of the game has slowed down a little bit in the second half, but we're still seeing a lot of really tough shots made. And, a good battle tonight. And there is some great scorers on the floor tonight between these two teams and two teams that are looking to prove their worth 
and the GNAC going head to head in a rivalry, of course. It's always going to be fun. Got seven and a half left to determine which one is the victor. It is Shaw Anderson for Seattle Pacific out of the media timeout going to work. Anderson with Ned there. Ned might have got a piece of it off the block. Jonathan Ned, a good defensive effort, what the Vikings needed on a stop. Now, can they convert on offense? Kai Johnson driving in. He's rejected and saved as well. What a play by Nikia Schoenerstedt. Boy, he's having a heck of a night. A guy who came in averaging a point and a half a game. He has seen 23 minutes of action as well. He's also handling the ball, but it gives it up to Z. Now Z, step back three, high arcing shot, almost went. Vikings do get it off a tip, though. So, dribble to the wing and run this box set that the Vikings have been running for about 30 years now. Kai Johnson wrapping around off a screen off the ball, puts it up, can't get it. Rebound by the Vikings, Louis Grant Holiday oh. leans in for it. Also played by the redshirt freshman on a second chance opportunity. Vikings show another good offensive rebound. Vikings are leading on the offensive glass 14 to nine. We are all tied up 29 to 29 in the total rebounds. Good fake inside Kai Johnson. What a block on Shooter Stett. Vikings going quick, Velp. Outside of Jonathan Ned and the Vikings will settle. Ned trying to get it. Kai Johnson into a three-pointer. Oh. A huge two-ended play by Kai Johnson, getting a spectacular block in one end, knocking down the three at the other, putting the Vikings up by four. Kai Johnson, 15 points now tonight. Falcons looking to answer. Lutonen in the corner, he does. What a shot. And there will be a timeout here by Seattle Pacific. Coach's timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep things here on live. Oh, and Kyle Lutman, a, a little over 80% of his attempts come from three. Now tonight, nine of his ten have. He's at four threes and a two, 14 points. He spent three years at UW, four years. Um, scored one, in one game. Yep. He scored six points against Idaho State. So now here's your, here's your thing. Who is the coach at Idaho State? I got no The clue. coach at Idaho State is Ryan Looney. Ryan Looney was previously at, at Point Loma, and before that, he was the coach at Seattle Pacific. I think they should invent something called athletic family trees, and you should be the leader of athletic <laughs> family trees and just coach to coach each team, every team in Division II, Division I, how they're connected, <laughs> which can be a leader of that. NCAA, they need to reach out to this guy right here. <laughs> I might have just scored you a new role. I've got an associate in the Midwest who, who yeah. covers me with a lot of stuff, too. So. There you, go. you both can make it to the top. Vikings after that big three by SPU. And Kyle Lutonen now just have a one-point lead. They'll go to Kai Johnson at the block. Johnson, Elsner falls down. Johnson no, just no, steps no. through. He may have had contact. That's not usually defined as falling. Yeah, exactly. We Kai won't say what it was, but... It, and Johnson takes advantage of it. Vikings lead back up to three. Anderson trying to go to work into the paint. Double clutch move. Tough finish once again. Shaw Anderson tonight, 26. And he's got a chance. He's just going to keep adding. Vikings with Jonathan Ned near that student section cheering him on. Ned inside. Can't get it off a short layup. What a fought for rebound by Nick Velt. Kick out Johnson for three and oh. one. Wow. A huge shot by Kai Johnson. He just about went an Elvis and left the building after he missed that. Yeah. A great rebound by Velp. That's not a lot of points, but very active. And now this and like the, the bump. And you see him disappear into the corner there. He was about a foot from the door. <laughs> he was like Bo Jackson running out the tunnel in the yeah, kingdom. Exactly. He was trying to hit the showers early. And he converts the four-point play. We've seen a couple of those from Kai Johnson 
in this season, but that one was as big as it comes. Nikes with a five point lead. Goodness gracious. He wants to get a shot. He gets a shot. Exactly. Once this again, is so impressive. Fading away. He just keeps going and going. 26 now, points. It's also, we missed in the chaos. Make it 28, sorry. In the chaos, Owen Moriarty, that was his fifth foul on Ooh. Kai Johnson. He's out of the game. Boy, he started this as well. Tough closeout to get your fifth foul on. From the elbow, rolling around. Ned can't get it. Out of bounds. It'll be SPU ball. Vikings thought it was theirs. But instead, it'll be out of bounds and force us into immediate timeout. What a game brewing here. Vikings with a 75 to 72 lead. 347 left. Make sure you tune in for the last bit of this one on Vikings TV. The Teaching Learning Academy is an organization that's housed in the library and it's where people come to have conversations. They deal with serious issues that have emotional impact in ways that are typically not found in a class. We've talked about diversity and inclusivity on our campus and in our community. It not only enriches my education but also impacts the ways that I can continue my leadership roles. Part of the crowd of over 1,100 people there tonight on bobblehead night. And uh, they're seeing a good one. Vikings with a 75-72 lead, 3.47 to go. Uh, a good one just across the border, too, in, in Burnaby. Montana State Billing, 71. Simon Fraser, 69, as they are at the final media timeout as well. As you said, Simon Fraser playing better ball over the last couple weeks here. And, Interesting to see if they can knock off the Yellow Jackets. SPU will see them on Saturday. Vikings will be back here, home against Montana State Billings as the two teams swap locations. SPU on offense out of the media timeout, stolen away by Isaac Morrow. Vikings get a crucial turnover and a chance to turn this into a two possession game. Man, we haven't seen men's basketball in two weeks and they are delivering tonight. Johnson going to work back to the basket, step back too short, and Kai Johnson ends up pushing the defender to the ground, trying to get his own rebound. And, and Johnson got into Kobe Elsner last time, and Kobe went flying. He held his ground that time, forced a much tougher shot for Kai, and then Kai's effort to get the rebound picks up his fourth. 3.15 to go, not too dangerous, but you would not want to lose your leading score quickly here in a, in a game that has been as tight as this one. And Kai Johnson, he has been providing in this game more than just scoring nine rebounds as well. He had nine against Western Oregon. Three minutes to go in this game for Seattle Pacific. They trail by three. Z looking to get it to Anderson, six on the shot clock. Anderson, step back from the GNAC logo. Oh, goodness. Once what? again. What do you do? You can't do anything. 30. If if you defend him any closer, you're fouling him. Well, Isaac Morrow has kept him from going by. Give him credit for that. But Anderson's just raising up over him, Dribble using hand. the extra size to knock those shots down. Dribble handoffs for the Vikings. Tijon Sane drives in with the contact. Can't get it. Nick Velp with a putback. Another offensive rebound for Western Washington. Another Viking Falcon Classic. Three-point game, Western lead, just over two minutes to go. Schooner Stett on the right side, Maui Z. Switched on now with Nick Velp. They kick outside, Luton in, fakes a three, will now pull it up, and that one can't roll in off the double bounce. Now one of the things the Vikings have done well defensively tonight, Seattle Pacific will always throw a lot of back cuts at you, and Western has done a really good job of not giving up that back cut, staying with that cutter, Cutting off the lane and making it very difficult for that pass to be made if they can make it at all. Perimeter handoffs for the Vikings. It'll settle with Kai Johnson. Johnson with seven. 
Sane on the left side. Floater goes off glass, can't get it. Rebound tipped around, SPU handles it. Oh, they got a really good look. You can't complain about the look, Tijon just didn't knock it down. Minute and a half left in this game. 77-74. And they'll dribble it to the sideline and take a timeout. Seattle Pacific will draw up something on offense. We'll keep things yeah. live here in Carver Gym. No bonus points for guessing who the first option is going to be on this play. Shaw Anderson, a wild, yep. a wild guess. 30 points on 14 of 21 shooting tonight. And then you would think that they will try and do something if, if the double team comes down and Anderson has to get it. And then you can Luton and find a spot to get open on the on the wing. He's be, he'd be the next option. I mean, he's taken 10 threes. You can only imagine yeah. he's the second to go. He's made four of them. Vikings will need a big stop here. They've been good on defense, of course, still winning that turnover battle by a plus eight. Yeah, 13 to five. Yeah. Man, hey, just five turnovers is outstanding. It's amazing. That's a, that's a great number. Vikings have shot it well, but Seattle Pacific just will not cool down. 55% from the field. The Vikings, though, with a good 43 of themselves. And we'll see what Tony Dominguez has on defense to try and counter Seattle Pacific. Looking to either tie or bring this one within one on a basket on this possession. A minute 22, plenty of time for either team to give way. Vikings had a close loss against St. Martin's in a heartbreak on the road down in Lacey. There's the game-winning layup after Kai Johnson was stripped. This one looking like it might come down to the wire as well. We'll see how the Vikings can perform in clutch time. SPU. Lutonen will inbound. 20 on the shot clock. Maui Z gets the inbound pass. He'll dribble out to the right. Jijan Singh guarding him high. Here is Shaw Anderson now. Lutonen on the left side. Lutonen back to Anderson. Anderson with eight. Back to the basket. Anderson trying to muscle, kicks far corner. Schooner Stett can't get it. Tipped around Anderson, offensive rebound. Anderson up, gets a Ooh. foul. As Velp and Morrow were both there. There isn't a big complaint. You could argue that he initiated the contact, but maybe Velp hadn't really gotten there. Isaac Morrow, personal foul number four, and two free throws coming for Shaw Anderson. He's 0 for 1 from the line in this game. So the fewest turnovers for the Vikings this year has been seven. They've done that on a, on a couple of occasions. The fewest in the GNAC, just four. Anderson misses the first of two with a minute remaining. Will Anderson wow. will come in for Morrow. A 91% free throw shooter. And he's missed two tonight. Yeah, he's 0 for 2 now. Knocks down the second one, and now it's just a two-point game. Vikings are in the double bonus, and the shot clock did not reset. And they will put 24 seconds on it for the Vikings. 55.3 on the game clock. And um, no need to foul here for Seattle Pacific. Play it out. See if you can get a stop, and then you may have to follow the next possession if you don't, Vikings, things don't go your way. The goal is to drain clock, get a good shot off, hopefully turn this into a two-possession game. See what they look for here. Maybe a high screen with Sane. You could have also run that with Johnson. But. It is with Nick Velp. Kai Johnson now to the left side. Five on the shot clock. Johnson step back, rolls out, tipped out by Velp. Elsner gets it, though. Shot clock turned off. And timeout is called by SPU with 27 seconds. Oh, boy. SPU could send this thing to overtime or win the game with a three-pointer. Uh, a good possession. I mean, you get your you get the leading scorer in the conference, a guy who's in top ten in the country in scoring. He got a decent look. A shot that he makes. And, and then on the rebound, it, Nick Velp was probably not going to be able to get two hands on that. Batting it out was a good call, and there were – Two or three Vikings in the area, and, and Kobe Elsner happened to be in the right spot and got the rebound. We'll see what Seattle Pacific has drawn up. The interim head coach, Kefri Fazio, will draw up his signature play on this one, I imagine. For a moment like this, need a big shot. Fazio took over from Grant Leap. Uh, 
who went on to an assistant coaching position at Seattle University. So see what they do here. You gotta, you gotta believe it's going through Shaw Anderson. It has to. 31 points tonight. Lutonen will inbound once again, as we saw in their last side out. He's got 31 tonight. His career high set earlier this season, 33. They inbound it to Shaw Anderson. I'm gonna give him room. Game clock rolling now. SPU with Z on the right side, Singh guarding him. Down to 17. They get it to Shaw Anderson on the right side. Gonna pull up off a move. Can't get it. Front of the rim, Nick Velp with a rebound. And Nick Velp is fouled with 9.7 on the game clock. Ty Johnson was trying to call a timeout there, but they called the foul first. So Nick Velp will go to the line. A 75% free throw shooter. He has he is one of two tonight. Seattle Pacific is out of timeouts. So they've got to go. They're gonna have to advance, you know, they're gonna have to go without a timeout. They'll run something quick. And Velp misses the first. Just a two-point game, 77-75, 9.7. They're gonna bring in Jonas Latour in. Yeah, more Sunday of an Bills offensive there. threat than Kobe Elsner. Exactly. If they make this. Western, I could see Western calling time out to set the defense. Possibly. There's Velp. discussion. Velp gets nails it. They're it. not going to do that, so they, they'll set it. Ready to roll here with SPU. Seven seconds for Z. Down to five. Four with Z. He pulls up a foul before it, yeah. though. And what they're going to call is that Tijon Sane got his arm wrapped around Shaw Anderson. And. and Frankly, that's not a bad foul, exactly. even though Tijon Sane looked like he didn't want to do it. And uh, it's going to be one and one. And now the question here is, is because this is off the ball, are they going to call this intentional? And, and he's just trying to swim back. He gets caught on the screen. I, I don't think there's any intent there. This should just be a one and one. But if they're going to call this an off the ball foul where he's not making any play, I believe it's two in the ball. And so that would be critical. It, it, but I can't see that from what I saw there. Yeah, I, I would agree. be very surprised if that was the case. Agreed. So it'll most likely end up being with Shaw Anderson, who would have one and one at the line. 3.1 on the game clock to do this thing. Just a three-point game. A one and one would mean that Seattle Pacific would have to make both and then potentially foul again on Western Washington and play the free throw game. And at what point... Do you start running out of possessions is the question maybe for Seattle Pacific. If you send someone like Shaw Anderson to the free throw line, who I believe it will be, the foul was not on Maui Z. It was instead on Shaw Anderson. If it is Shaw Anderson, he's one for three from the free throw line, so you're not even guaranteed that he is going to knock both down. Okay, so there was no doubt about it just being a, a common foul. Okay. They were just trying to see who the foul was and who was shooting the free throws. Gotcha. And it should be Anderson. And it is. Okay, so 3.1, down three. You make the first and miss the second, especially, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you probably have to. I think at this to. point, yes, because not enough time to play the foul game. Carver getting loud behind their Vikings. First free throw of two is good. See how they have it set up. We'll they see. have... Four fairly, yeah, and they are crashing. You can see how Latour and Littman are going. Off the front of the rim, Nick Velp. The rebound is fouled. So. Gets it, and he is fouled. So Nick Velp with 1.9, going to shoot free throws. So Nick Velp can ice this. He makes both. So we have a time check here is what the refs will go. Into the replay blue. Check how much we got off the foul of Nick Velp. Velp, he was just to the free throw line and did a good job keeping the Vikings in the lead. This one could ice it with two makes. 1.9, a miss, and a, it would have to be a heave with no timeouts for Seattle Pacific as their only shot yeah. at sending this thing to overtime or potentially off two misses winning this thing. Vikings have shot 80% from the free throw line tonight. And they have been phenomenal. Kai Johnson has led that way with 21 points, nine rebounds on eight of 19, shooting the leader of this team and getting his team into the win column for 
potentially the second straight game if they can hold on. Another good balanced effort. 16 points for Will Wilson, 14 points for Tijon Sane, 10 for John Ned. And at the other end, uh, Shaw Anderson has been brilliant. 32 points, six rebounds. Just an awesome night. Lutman with 14 and Schoenerstedt with 10, the other two double-figure scorers there. So we get .8 added on to the game clock from 1.9 to 2.7. 2 2.7 is enough That's that you can you can get some distance covered in yeah. that. It all comes down to Nick Velp's free throws here. So again, came in at 75%, just two of four tonight. Velp makes the first of two. And Nick Velp is perfect. And very clean on both. Four point lead for the Vikings with 2.7. SPU in need of a miracle. No foul here for the Vikings. That one tipped out of bounds with 1.6. So, yeah, yeah you just about just walk have everyone away, sit right? in the key. Everyone sit in the paint. Let them shoot a three, don't foul them. Just let them catch the ball and do whatever they want exactly. with it. Hands behind your back, please. So the Vikings, second straight win, and prove to 14 and nine here and move into at least a tie for that last spot. Luton in, tried to get a foul off of it. Vikings are gonna win an 80 to 76 victory. Western Washington returns home and picks up a victory six and six. Now in the conference, 14 and nine overall. Seattle State falls to 13 and 12 and six and six in the GNAC. Vikings pick up a close victory against a tough Seattle Pacific team. They will take on Montana State Billings on Saturday. And really quickly here, Central Washington leading comfortably in the second half. So Western probably remains a game behind them. And we'll work toward Jeff Evans in just a moment here. Zen Hill is going to do the post-game interview. And he's going to talk to Kai Johnson, and we will take it to him right now. Down here on the court with Kai Johnson. What a win for you guys. A tough game, the rivalry game, of course. Just take me through the euphoria of that victory, man. Man, we just we needed that one. Uh, they're a great team. A uh, little rivalry going on. It's gone back a while, but... Uh, we just fought. We fought at the end. We fought throughout the night. Just got to be able to pull out the ugly ones. Tell me what it's like coming down to the wire like that in a close game against a tough team. And as you said, a win that you obviously you guys needed. What does it feel like to pull out in a close game like that? Man, that's what, that's what I live for. That's what we all live for. Those games, that's what makes this game fun. Um, and it's just great to be on the side of pulling it out and, and uh, getting the win there. You continue, you know, a great year of scoring, and I think a key play was that and one on the three. Take me through that. How were you able to put in such a tough shot, man? I just let, just let it fly. You know, we, uh, we shoot every day, and uh, coaches tell me just let it fly. Just be confident in every shot you take, and uh, that's what I did. Saturday, Montana State Billings. What's the mindset heading into that one here at home? Uh, get another one. That's all it is. Get another one. How does it feel to be back home as well after, you know, two weeks being gone? Oh, it's great. I love it here. We love playing here. It's the best. We got the best fans. Exactly. It was For a real. good crowd. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Guy. Great game. Appreciate it. Appreciate of course, it. as always. We'll see you on Saturday when the Vikings take on Montana State Billings and the Yellow Jackets. You can catch it here on Vikings TV.